Welcome to Chemistry Online. Today we're going to talk about elements and isotopes. By way of review, we recall that matter is defined as any substance that has mass. Matter is composed of atoms, and atoms are composed of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and the electrons surround the nucleus. This is a very classic depiction of an atom. It shows a large nucleus and electrons surrounding a nucleus in little orbits. This has been replaced by the quantum model. We still have the nucleus in the middle, but now it's very, very small. And the electrons are in a cloud surrounding the nucleus. We recall that for every atom, we can identify that atom by its atomic number. The atomic number represents the number of protons in the nucleus. It doesn't matter how many neutrons are in the nucleus. It doesn't matter how many electrons are around the atom. If the atom has six protons, it is defined as a carbon atom. Let's look at carbon a little more closely. This is carbon-12. It has a nucleus containing six protons and six neutrons. We could write the atomic symbol like this. Recall that the mass number, the sum of the protons and neutrons, is shown as a superscript, and the number of protons, that is the atomic number, is the subscript. If we take carbon-12 and we add one additional neutron to this nucleus, we wind up with a carbon atom. It's still carbon, but now it has a mass number of 13. For carbon, we can do this again and we wind up with a carbon with a mass number of 14. Carbon exists in nature as a mixture of carbon-12, 13, and 14. These are referred to as isotopes. They're all carbon, they just have different masses. Now in order to do quantitative calculations involving carbon, we need to know exactly how much carbon is going to weigh. We can do that because the ratio of isotopes in the Earth's crust and in the atmosphere is constant. This slide shows that carbon-12 represents roughly 99% of all carbon atoms. Carbon-13, about 1%, and carbon-14 is just a trace. We can take the percentage, that is the natural abundance, and the mass of the carbon, and we can multiply them together like this, add the two together, and we generate the average atomic mass of carbon. Let's go ahead and do this in a problem dealing with antimony. Antimony consists of two isotopes, antimony-121 and antimony-123. This slide gives the natural abundance and it gives the exact mass of each isotope. First thing to do is to convert the natural abundance into a fraction. We simply do that by moving the decimal point. The calculation is simple. It's just the fraction times the exact mass for each isotope. We add these up, and the exact mass for antimony is 121.76. If you look at the periodic table, the entry for antimony will look like this. The atomic number is 51, that's the number of protons, and the exact mass, or the average mass, is 121.76. Let's do it again for chlorine. Chlorine consists of two isotopes, chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. Again, we want to take the natural abundance convert it to a fraction. The calculation is simply the fraction times the exact mass, and we add these together. For chlorine, the average atomic mass is 35.45. The masses of various elements, the exact masses, are determined using a technique called mass spectrometry. In the mass spectrometer, what you do is you take the element, move it into the gas phase, you will ionize it, and then bend the beam of ions with a magnet. You analyze 
each of these, um, the masses of each of the beams, and using a standard, you can get a very accurate determination of the mass of the particular element or compound. This is some data for boron. Boron consists of two isotopes, boron-11 and boron-10. You'll note the exact mass of boron-11 is 11.09305, and it consists of 80% of this isotope in the Earth's crust. You also may wonder why boron-11 weighs 11.009 and not exactly 11. That's because mass specs have to be calibrated with something. By international agreement, mass specs are, ca are, are calibrated using the isotope carbon-12. Carbon-12 is given a mass of exactly 12. The protons and neutrons in other elements differ slightly from the mass in carbon. Therefore, since carbon is our standard, it is the only element that winds up with an integer for an exact mass, and everybody else is just slightly off.